Good evening, Robert Scribbler. It is April 29th, 2019. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now, for this segment, I am going to set in context a number of severe weather events that have been occurring and talk in particular about how climate change impacts severe weather, in particular hurricanes, uh, thunderstorms, and possibly tornadoes as well as though, uh, although the, the signal for climate change in tornadoes right now is still somewhat uncertain in the, in, in the science. Now, recently in Mozambique, we have seen the unprecedented, uh, unprecedented double impact of two major cyclones, what would be category three and four hurricanes striking Mozambique in, in, in less than a, a multi-week time frame. And these cyclones were named Ida and Kenneth, and both of them have had major impacts on Mozambique, destroying tens of thousands of homes, forcing hundreds of thousands of people to evacuate, and in combination, at this point, resulting in the loss of more than 1,000 souls. Now, these tropical cyclones have emerged from much warmer than normal ocean state in the Indian Ocean. And from this picture through Earth Null School, we see that temperatures in the Indian Ocean region near Mozambique and through which the path of both Ida and Kenneth tracked, we're in the range of about 1 to 1.4, possibly as high as 2 degrees Celsius or more above normal. And these warmer than normal ocean surfaces likely contributed to the rapid intensification of Kenneth and the high intensity of Kenneth and Ida as they made landfall. Now, of course, warming ocean surfaces are also driven in larger part by human-caused climate change, which is in turn primarily driven by fossil fuel burning. Now, I'm going to get more into the dynamics that help to fuel st strong storms, the climate change-related dynamics that help to fuel strong storms. But before I do, I'd also like to talk about a new study that has determined that in the United States, tornadoes in general overall since 1979 have been increasing in frequency, that the overall net energy in tornadic storms has increased as well. And scientists at this point, at least uh, with this study, are, are not yet uh, confident enough to say that this is all due to climate change, but, but there does appear to be a climate change fingerprint on these tornado trends that we are now seeing. Now, if any of you have recently traveled, you'll have noticed that there have been a lot of groundings of aircraft, a lot of uh, flight cancellations. Uh, I was recently you know, driving my uh, a Tesla for rideshare to share clean energy on, on Friday, and, and a number of my passengers had had their, their flights canceled due to very severe weather in the D.C. area. And, and, and that severe weather is also in part fueled by climate change due to the increasing intensity of evaporation, uh, moisture rising from the lands, which uh, and 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 some other factors which which may fuel instability, which I'll get into more later. But looking at these overall trends, you can see that the annual number of tornadoes represented by the dashed blue line has been steadily increasing uh, on the trend line since 1979. Of course, you get a high variance year to year, and then the accumulated. Uh, sum of, of daily max significant tornadoes, which is a, a representation of, of, of tornadic um, energy, also showed a relatively steady increase. Now, what's also interesting is that the 
spatial disposition or the spatial frequency of tornadoes has, has tended to shift eastward, uh, east of the Mississippi for the U.S. Does not mean that Tornado Alley is not the region where tornadoes most frequently occur. Uh, the, that region is still seeing the higher, highest frequency overall. But in the 1979 to 2017 timeframe that this study looked at, the number of tornadoes tended to drop off a little bit in the Tornado Alley region, but and to rise significantly across the eastern half of the United States, as you can see in this graphic provided by this study. I'm just going to do, uh, provide a shout out to this study. It's called the Spatial Trends in United States Tornado Frequency. Uh, the authors are Vittorio A. Gensini and Harold E. Brooks. So please take a look at this study if you're interested. It's provided by nature.com. Now, I just want to, to lay the groundwork here as, as I go into talking about how climate change can provide more fuel for storms, how climate change can tend to be an engine for storm intensification. And, and, and this satellite shot here that I'm showing you right now is of, of Kenneth as it approaches the Mozambique coast. And the reason why I'm looking at Kenneth right now is because uh, tropical cyclones, hurricanes are, are in and of themselves heat and moisture and instability and evaporation engines. They, they feed on warm sea surface temperatures. The warmer the sea surface temperature, the stronger the moisture ri uh, rise uh, through evaporation off the surface of the ocean, the more fuel there tends to be for hurricanes. And, and, and you can get a, a decent understanding of how this works by, by looking at this illustration in another scientific study looking at the impact of uh, convection and convective energy on hurricanes, where you see that there's a, a rising column of air running through the, the center of the storm, which provides the, the primary source uh, of the energy or storm formation. Now there's a number of other factors, but the, the primary factor is this rising column air, of air, which is fed by evaporation of, of moist air. And, and one of the reasons why, why moist air is, is so important is because the, the latent heat energy of water is higher. And this, as water warms, it tends to expand pretty rapidly and, and provide uh, condensation as well for, for cloud tops, which also generates more instability by also producing downdrafts and precipitation. But, but the one thing to remember is that the energy of water rising off, up off the surface of the ocean is a primary feeder or contributor to hurricane development and also hurricane intensification, in particular, rapid intensification. So looking at another study, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, cite this one for you. It's, it's, um, it's titled On the Role of Convective Available Potential Energy in Tropical Cyclone Intensification. But moving on to another study and looking at the abstract of uh, water budget and intensity change of tropical cyclones in the, over the Western North Pacific, I just also like to read out this particular statement. And, and this is from the abstract, and it states that the results show that surface evaporation plays an important role in rapid storm intensification, and the highest evaporation associated with rapidly intensifying tropical cyclones is associated with the highest sea surface temperature. So the formation and intensification of storms is driven by warm water, and the evaporation of water vapor from that water. And moving back to the Earth Null School map, in the region where we've seen the, the recent record-breaking tropical cyclones, uh, unprecedented, unprecedented in the last 60 years at least, since record keeping began, modern record keeping began in this region, is that sea surface temperatures are much warmer than normal. 
And switching to the sea surface temperature map, we find that these sea sur surface temperatures range of 30 degrees Celsius or, or 86 degrees Fahrenheit or above. So, so very, very warm sea surface temperatures, uh, very anomalous sea surface temperatures in the sense that these sea surface temperatures are much warmer than normal. And in addition, these very warm sea surface temperatures are pumping a lot of moisture into the atmosphere in the form of total precipitable water, which, which is a a, a feeder as, as we saw in these studies for hurricanes. So to simplify, warm waters means more fuel for hurricanes. And so if you increase the surface temperatures of the water, you provide more fuel for storms and you increase the peak potential intensity of storms and storms can grow stronger, they can grow bigger, they can become burlier, and they can cause a lot more damage as the ocean and as the Earth environment warms up as well. Now, flipping over to another major storm system or, or generator of storms for the Earth system, we, I just wanted to show you um, some of the aspects of thunderstorm structure, which are also influenced by evaporation and, and, the, and moisture rising up off the surface of the earth. But before I do that, I just like to generally state that according to our understanding of atmospheric physics, with each one degree Celsius of global temperature increase, the average rate of evaporation across the surface of the Earth increases by about 8%. And since what, what goes up must come down as well, you also end up with an average increase of precipitation of about 8% as well. Now these are averages. Since the Earth's surface is uneven and since the effects of warming on the Earth's surface are uneven, then you also tend to see regions of the Earth's surface which tend to see a greater portion of this 8% increase in evaporation isolated into those regions. And, and precipitation can also tend to become more prevalent in certain regions, particularly regions that tend to see more trough development or, or more cool air formation that, that tends to act as a condenser. Now, looking at thunderstorm structure. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit. Looking at thunderstorm structure, we see that the, the heart of a thunderstorm is this column of rising air that, that pulls warm, moist air up into uh, the atmosphere. And because it's moist, it tends to condense into cloud and it tends to push up into the upper regions of the troposphere, generating uh, in the most intense storms an overshooting cloud top that punches above the, the tropos tropopause. And, and, and in this particular diagram, what we're looking at is a supercell. And supercells are, are among the most intense thunderstorms and with the potential to generate extraordinary, extraordinary hail, tornadoes, strong gusty winds, these, these things that we call microbursts, which can also be very destructive. So, so a very intense kind of storm. The heart of this storm being a column of rising moist air fueled by hot lands evaporating moisture into the atmosphere. So if you're increasing the overall rate of evaporation across the surface of the earth by 8%, you're punching up the, the, the potential intensity of these storms, the, the supercell storms. Now, I also like to call your attention to the front region of the supercell, the front region of this anvil. And the front region is, is the region of downdraft, of, of, of precipitation and, and heavy rains. And so this is the, the flip side of evaporation, you know, because what goes up must come down you, you end up with the downdraft re region of, of the thunderstorm, which, which includes the, the strongest region of precipitation and, and the strongest uh, down, down forcing winds. So, 
So, th so this is the the overall structure of a thunderstorm, an engine of evaporation and precipitation. And if you're increasing evaporation and precipitation by warming the surface of the Earth, you're you're increasing the thermal structure of a thunderstorm, or maybe not of every thunderstorm, but of many thunderstorms. And so, over the years, we've seen a tendency for increasingly intense rainfall events and and in many cases increasingly severe thunderstorms with the caveat being that the 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 production of tornadoes may or may not be increasing by uh due to climate change because uh tornado formation tends to be pretty complicated but at least if we're looking at the u.s we do see a trend of increasing tornado frequency even though the distribution, the spatial distribution of tornadoes is changing, which, which might also be a climate change related signal. So overall, climate change provides more fuel for storms in the form of increased rates of evaporation, which, which loads storms up with moisture and uh, instability and, and energy and can help produce that increased rate of precipitation, which we have seen in so many extreme rainfall events, but also can help to spike the intensity of hurricanes, producing stronger winds and stronger storm surges and potentially a more frequent outbreak of the more severe hurricanes and a, a more frequent outbreak of the more severe thunderstorms. So overall, that's how climate change can act as a storm intensification, intensification engine. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.